Good morning. I wish I was there with y'all, but I'm enjoying a wonderful time with my family and a wonderful time getting to visit. And you know, we're up here for Mateo's graduation. And it's such a wonderful time to be able to experience that with her in person. With that said, I wish I was there with y'all in person, but we're going to do the best that we can. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity you've given us. Lord God, that although we be many miles apart, we can still join together in the fellowship of your word. I pray, Father God, that this message this morning will be used to pour into the hearts of those that are listening. Father God, myself included, let us find something that we can use from this to be able to advance our growth in you, Lord God. We ask all this in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Those of you who take notes, the message this morning, the title of the message is, Come Up Here. Come Up Here. Let's go straight to the text. We're going to be in Revelation this morning. We're going to look at chapter 4, verse 1 first, and then we're going to look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 12. Here's our two verses this morning. After this, I looked up, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had heard first speaking to me like a trumpet said come up here and i will show you what must take place after this then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them come up here and they went to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on again this is revelation 4 1 revelation 11 12. you know it's a famous statement made by john muir he's a naturalist and he said that the mountains are calling and I must go. I answered the call and here I am. We're able to spend the, the week here in the mountains. And I always enjoy every opportunity we can to be around there. But you know what? We answer the call and come up here to the mountains. There's another call that we need to be listening for. A greater call than that. This is what Paul spoke of. He spoke in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14. He said, I press on toward the call to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I got a question for you this morning. My question this morning is, what is calling you? Is it Christ from on high or is it something down here? Don't be fooled. Something is calling you. We are all answering someone's call. Now, like I've said before, Bob Dylan loved to sing, we all got to serve somebody. Now, my job, my calling as a pastor is to help you turn an ear in the right direction. As to what you're actually listening for, to help you know what to listen for. You know, John in chapter 10, verse 27 through 28, Jesus is saying this. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I love that verse. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. We must be found listening in order that we may hear. My sheep know my voice because we're listening for them. You know, I'm a parent and even though my kids are you know, as old as they are now, all of us who are parents, we still know there's a difference between whether a child is truly hearing what you have to say. You know, God has always described to us as our Heavenly Father. And, you know, He knows that struggle to get through to us was real. So He gave us some advice, and this is the advice that He gave us. In James chapter 122, He said this, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only. It's wonderful to hear the word, but there's some things that we just have to do. We, as parents, and God as our earthly father, know that if you really want to know if your kids heard what you were saying, if they were truly listening, then what? You're going to watch what they do. God does the exact same thing with us. To every one of us, the, the text we open with in Revelation is true. To you and to me. I'm going to read that again, what we were opened with. After this, I looked, and there was before me a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I heard first speaking to me like the trumpet said, 
come up here. Revelation 4, 1. And then Revelation 11, 12, we hear Jesus again. And he said, then I heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud. Come up here. Jesus is proclaiming that same thing to all of us. If we're only found listening, if we're only able to hear, if we're only willing to hear. You know, whenever Jesus cried out, he said that, come up here. When he was speaking there, he was speaking first to the apostle John, and then he was speaking to the faithful. You know, and the apostle John and the faithful, they were called into heaven. They heard the voice and they passed through the open door. But why? Because they chose to do something. They were doing something. They were listening. That way they could hear him. But it said there that they, he heard him through an open door. How did that happen? It's because they chose to obey Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. What does Revelation 3, 20 say? The words of Jesus. He says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will be friends. Wow. I have to ask you, are you listening for that call of Christ? How can you truly hear him unless you open that door, the, the physical door, but also the door of communication? He said, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. Are you listening? Do you hear his voice? But then the second part is there. Have you opened the door? Have you opened the, 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 the communication lines between you and Christ? You know, marriages fail because of a lack of communication. Do you have that communication open between you and Christ? Have you opened the door? Have you done that? Have you let Jesus in your life? Maybe you have, and if you say, yes, I have, then great. I rejoice with you. You heard his voice. That's a wonderful thing. And you answered his call, and you opened the door, and you let him in. You heard. You listened. But are you doing the things he asked you to do? What did he ask me to do? He asked you to feed the hungry. Visit those in prison. He asks you to visit those in need. He asks you to take care of the poor, the widows, the orphans. Are we doing these things? You may say, yes, yes, I'm doing all of those things. Well, what about this? Jesus also told us what? Go ye therefore. It's bad English, but are you going ye therefore? Are you going out? Are you spreading the good news, the gospel to others? Are you sharing what Christ has given you with others? Are you doing that? Are you a hearer and a doer? It's good to listen. It's good to answer the call, but there are things that we have to do. And there's something else we have to do now. Those that have done all the things we should do for Christ. I have to ask now, are you listening now for his call to come up here? Come up here. I have to ask, is your Christian life moving to a higher plane? Are you coming up here to a higher level? A level of Christ, like Paul said, a heavenward level. Are you doing that? Are you moving toward that? You know, remember that's what Paul said in Philippians 3, 1, 4. He said, when I press on toward the call, Philippians 3, 14, I press on toward the call to win the prize for which has called me heavenward for Christ Jesus. That higher call. I've done the things I need to do here, but am I doing what I need to do to be able to move on toward that higher level where Christ is. Paul, Jesus, and, and I, for that matter, want so much more for you than the, the world down here calls you to. We have such a higher calling that we want to be able to see you move in, that we want you to be able to, see, to, be able to answer, that we want you to be able to move in these things where Christ has, the things of the higher calling, Come up here. Come up here. Have you ever said that? Come up here. 
If you say come up there, you're only saying that to someone that you want to come up to where you are. Someone that you want to be with. Someone that you want to spend time with. Someone that you want to share with. You'll tell them what? Come up here. You know, I've got a few members there in the church that have camps. And I'm thinking maybe I'll get that phone call and they say, what? Hey, why don't you come up here? Come visit with us. And I'll put anybody on the spot. But you say, come up here because it's someone that you want to be with you. Christ is standing there on the edges of heaven. Just like he did to the apostle John. Just like he did to the faithful in Revelation. He's saying, come up here. Now, not now. He wants you to be able to be on that same level where he is. He wants you to be able to answer that higher calling. Jesus is saying, come up here. And all we have to do is answer. I got to tell you, if I'm up here in the mountains and any of you, I pick up the phone and say, hey, come up here. And I'm also sending you a plane ticket. I'm pretty sure several of you would take the opportunity. It's because I want to be with you. It's because you see, and know, it's a wonderful opportunity. But Jesus has already paid the ticket. He's paid the fare. And he's telling you, come up here. Come up to where I am, to this higher plane. We're allowed to do that. God, Jesus wants us to do that. He wants us to be right there with him. These beautiful Rocky Mountains can't begin to compare with what Jesus has to offer. What's offered to us as believers? So I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Who wants to go to a higher place than we as a church are now? We, that pronoun means me and you. How many of you are willing to join with me that we can go up to this higher level? Now understand, just like the Apostle Paul said, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved those things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. I, as your pastor, am not where I need to be. I still need to go higher and higher in my spiritual life. I want to keep moving higher. You know what? I want you not just to go upward with me, but I want you to be pulling me up. Those of you who have attained these higher levels of understanding than I have. Your experiences are different than my experiences. I want you to reach down and help me. I want you to look at me and say, come up here. Come up here. We're all in this together. I want us to go as a church, onward and upward. Remember, I'm just a follower for Christ like you. I need your prayers. I need your support. Let's make the climb together. I ask the question again, who is with me? Come up here. Jesus is calling. Come up here. I got to wonder if I was there in the church, I'd say, who would sing the song with me? We're moving on up. We're moving on up. I'm going to put Zeb on the spot if he can play that. And even better if he can do a little jig, you know, like Mr. Jefferson did. But we're moving on up. We're moving on up. I believe that for this church. I believe that, that we're answering the call. Come up here. Now I want you to gather your neighbors and your friends and, hey, have them come up here with us too. I'm ready and I'm excited to start this climb together with you all. I can't wait to get back with you all, to be able to hear the stories of what God has done for you. I missed that point in the service this morning whenever we were able to get the joys of what God has done, what he's doing to move you up to this higher level. And I can't wait over the next few weeks and months for us all to be able to say, let me tell you what God's done to move me up, what God's done to bring me up as I answer the higher calling to move on up. Jesus is calling this morning, saying, come up here. If I was there with you, I'd put out my arms and I'd say, the altar is open. You want to answer the call? Come up here. Come to the altar. That's the first place to start this journey. Answer the call that Christ has put upon your life to accept him as your Savior. Then answer the call he's placed upon you as a Christian to bring others into the salvation knowledge of Christ. Answer the call to be the hands and feet of Jesus into this community. Come up here. Come up here. The altar is open. I wish I was there with you to let me know that I'm in prayer with you. And I feel the move of God coming and I am so excited 
for what God has in store for us as a church. Lord Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you, Lord God, for their faithfulness. I thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. And I pray, Lord God, that we will continue to move up as we answer your call. Blessings upon all of those I proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, the altar is open for as long as you need. Those of you at home, make an altar wherever you are. Today is the day that we answer the call. And we're moving on up. Amen. God loves you and I do too.